Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to have quartz.net read some higher level scheduler information from an app or a web config file, as well as how to have it read job and trigger settings from an XML file. So before we get into all of that, let's go ahead and look at what we already have in place. So we just have one job named example job and when it executes, it will just write to the console the current date and the name of the thread that's executing it. And besides that, the only other thing in our project is uh, this program class, since it's a console app. And we're just getting a Quartz scheduler and telling it to start. So you'll notice there's nothing here as far as setting up that scheduler or setting up jobs and triggers. Uh, the goal will be to have it read all of that information from our app config and from an XML file that we'll create. So first, let's set up our app config. I'm going to copy in a couple things here. So the first thing we need to do is just add a config section which I named Quartz, and the type will just be uh, this, this value here, uh, the name value section handler. And all that's saying is that we can have a section below this called Quartz, which will have key value pairs. So that's what we see right below here, is we have our Quartz node, and then some key value pairs. Um, so these are not all of the keys that are available within Quartz, there are actually a bunch. Uh, all of which can be found using this link. And you can get access to all this source code via a GitHub repository that I have, and I'll provide the link to that in the video notes. But for now, this will be enough to get us started. So we see that our first one is just giving our scheduler an instance name of my instance. We're saying that the thread pool that we want to use is Quartz's simple thread pool. We're going to tell it to use up to five threads and to set the priority on those threads as normal. These last two items pertain to setting up uh, quartz to read from an XML file for our jobs and triggers. First, so first we're just telling it that we want to use the XML plugin and the value is just the, um, the namespace and the assembly name for the XML scheduling data processor plugin. That's just a static value that you can use. And the last one is just the location of the XML file that we want it to read from. So in my case, I'm just going to have it read from a file named this, which will be in the bin folder when we build. Um, this could also be an absolute path, whatever you want it to be. So that's all that we need for our app config. So the next step is to actually create this XML file. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll add a new item just as we would any other XML file and give it that name. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to um, copy if newer to the output directory. That way it gets into our bin folder that when we build. So that's good there. Um, so one nice thing if you got quartz.net from NuGet is it also installs this uh, XSD XML schema file, which will, which can be used to give you IntelliSense within Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and add that to Visual Studio, tell Visual Studio to use it. So if we have our XML file open, we can just go to XML and schemas, click on add, browse to where the schema file is, open, and we see that it's going to be used here and click OK. So now uh, if I start typing in some XML, we'll see that I'm getting some uh, IntelliSense for the court specific items. Uh, I can add a schedule, start adding uh, jobs and triggers. Instead of typing the whole thing, I have one uh, pre-prepared for us though. Uh, similar to the app config where there were a bunch uh, of other keys that I'm not using, 
Uh, same idea with the XML. You can create all different kinds of jobs, uh, all different kinds of triggers. You'll see that you know we're using a cron trigger in my case, but you can create a calendar interval, a uh, simple trigger, uh, whatever you want to do. But again, this will be enough to give us a flavor for it. So I'm setting up a job, giving it a name, a group, and a description. This can be whatever I want it to be. And the job type, this is where we actually point it to the instance, or rather the implementation of iJob that we want it to run. So all this is is the namespace of the job we want it to run. So if we go to example job, we'll see that it's in this namespace and the class is example job. And so we just see the namespace dot uh, class name. That's all that is. And then it's comma space, the name of the assembly that it uh, is within. So if we go to the name of the assembly for this, we see it's quartz with XML configuration, and that's what we have there. So that's all for the job for now. And then in our trigger, we're having it be a cron trigger. Similar, we're just giving it to a, we're giving it a name and a group. We're telling it to run uh, this job. So uh, you'll see that this and this match, as well as the job group. Uh, we're giving it a, mis a misfire instruction, just say do nothing. In our cron expression, if you're familiar with these, this is just saying uh, run every second. And that's all that we need there. So again, to reiterate, our program cla or class rather is uh, just saying get scheduler and starting it. And so uh, quartz.net is going to know to return our XML file, and it's going to read in those app config settings that we mentioned here. It will look for this XML file. It will see our job and trigger. It will pull in all those settings, and then it will go ahead and start. So let's see uh, how that goes. So we see that it is firing every second. And the thread name is the instance name, underscore worker, and then the number of the thread. So we told it to use five. We see that it's going up to five and then you know, reusing the, the, the threads that it already has used. So we see that it is using uh, these settings and it's obviously using the XML file as well because it knows what job to run and to run it every second. So that's about it to get quartz.net to read from a config file and from an XML file to set up your scheduler, jobs, and triggers. Uh, once again, all of this source code will be in a GitHub repository, and I will provide a link to that in the video notes. Thanks, guys.